you might have heard of this word called entropy now entropy is related to the disorderedness of a system the randomness the chaos of a system okay it is the inherited disorderliness of a system that's entropy so the nature says or nature seems to be working in a way that no matter what happens the entropy of the whole universe should increase in that process so we have seen that any process that occurs increases the entropy of the whole universe if when water turns into vapors right the, the disorderliness is increasing and the entropy of the system is increasing and also the entropy of the whole universe increasing okay so along with the first law of thermodynamics we also have this thing called entropy so not just that the energies initially and the finally must be equal but on the top of that the entropy of the universe must be increasing from that process only then it can happen so when we think about that when vapors convert back into water or water converts back into ice isn't the entropy decreasing isn't the orderness increasing or the disorderness decreasing of course it is right but if you look into the entire universe you would see that the, the entropy of the entire universe has increased even in this process now i am not permitted to go although i really really want to into the details of this uh, topic it's a really interesting topic you should explore on your own and you will learn the mathematics of it in a chapter uh, in chemistry what we are going to discuss is the old form of the second law of thermodynamics the mechanical form and there are many statements for that precisely two so the first statement of the second law of thermodynamics is called as the kelvin planck statement okay and it goes like this no process is possible whose sole result is to take heat from a reservoir and convert it completely into mechanical work what does that mean to understand this kelvin planck statement the best thing we can do is to bring back our heat engine setup so if you look into the heat engine setup there is a reservoir and we are pulling some heat out of it right it is doing some work and it is giving off some heat so what is this statement saying it says no process is possible the sole result of which the only result the only thing which it does is to take heat from a reservoir right that delta q1 and convert it completely into mechanical work that is delta w so a process in which that delta q2 is zero that is there is no heat given off is not possible there has to be some delta q2 given off to the surrounding you cannot make a system in which the entire heat is converted into work although you see this is completely you know within the limits of the first law of thermodynamics this this is conservation of energy is still valid but the second law of thermodynamics is sort of limiting us by telling us that that delta q can never be equal to zero okay and all my hopes of making an engine which is 100% efficient is being completely shredded by nature anyway although the entropy thing which i discussed and this kelvin planck statement might seem very different but it can be shown that they both imply the same thing okay and now we are going to see the second statement for the second law of thermodynamics please remember all these statements that i am discussing the entropy the kelvin planck and the, the, the one which i am going to discuss they are all independent versions of the second law of thermodynamics and they all imply each other so the second statement is called as the clausius statement and clausius statement says this no process is possible the sole result of which is to take heat from a colder body and transfer it to a hotter body okay so what is it telling it is telling something which we already know right we know that automatically spontaneously heat doesn't go from a colder region to a hotter region okay and we can understand this clausius statement best in case of refrigeration you know in refrigeration what happens you're taking heat from a colder region and right? t2 is lesser than t1 so you're taking heat from a colder region and you're giving it to a hotter region but the statement says a process whose sole result is to take heat from a colder region give it to a hotter region is not possible it means that there has to be some work that is to be done on the system to achieve that or in other words you will never find in nature that heat is going from a colder body to a hotter body on its own okay very simple to understand right kelvin planck statement can be seen 
in the light of heat engines and the Clausius statement can be seen in the, in the light of refrigeration and because both are basically the same principle, right? all these statements, even the entropy thing can be related and they are related. Okay, so this is the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics comes and says, no, 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 dude, you cannot make an engine with 100% efficiency. That's just not possible. Okay. And so because of this is this reason, you cannot do all that. But then you got to ask a question. If you cannot achieve 100% efficiency, then what is that maximum efficiency that you can achieve? Is it 80%? Is it 85%? Is it 86%? Or is it something that depends on the setup? There has to be some maximum limit, right, to which we uh, aspire to, okay? And it turns out that there is a maximum limit. Of course, it is not one. And there's a specific kind of theoretical engine that we can design, which can lead us to this maximum possible value of the efficiency of that engine. Now, to completely understand the theoretical engine, which can give you maximum efficiency, you have to understand the concept of reversible processes. So let's get into that. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.